Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that like and the subscribe button. And if you have any opinions at all that you would like to share, make sure to leave them down in the comment section. Vanity Strikes. Hope for the Broken. Vanity Strikes is an American metalcore band, one I had absolutely no idea of their existence until this request came in, which came as a bit of a surprise to me since this band has toured and opened for the likes of Asking Alexandria, We Came as Romans, and Motionless in White, and I at least have fond memories of two of those bands. So despite this genre and field of music not being the most prestigious, I still eagerly awaited my chance to check out this record, their debut actually, and see what it was all about. So let's dive in. What are my thoughts on Hope for the Broken? Let's find out as I review it track by track. Since I have no idea if there were actually any singles or not, we will just start at the top of the track list with that being Killing Zone, which kicks off with all these wartime sounds, guns, explosions, planes flying over the battlefield, all soundtracked by this orchestral marching band tune. It kind of got me a bit worried that given its initial vibe plus the color scheme of the album cover, that I was going to be in for some overly patriotic, testosterone-injected shit that newsflash doesn't work for me, and I was kind of right. Though there are some elements that make this a bit more of a palatable experience for me. The biggest one in particular being the vocalist Daniel Case, not being this guttural, heavy singer. He's got a vocal style similar to your typical pop punk singer. A bit more snotty, nasally, that whole crowd which I've always found much more appealing, but he can still shriek and growl good enough for the genre. The second, which often tends to be the case for bands like this, is that the actual musicians here are pretty competent. The drumming in particular is consistently great, and guitarist Kevin Murphy shines as the best part of the song to me, with great staccato riffs and a fun solo to boot. The lyrics, which I tried to decipher myself, a bit difficult given the genre in question, but it does seem to confirm my suspicions, talking about going to war for your country, and while it does take a mental toll, there's no way you can go down without a proper fight. Not the best metalcore track I've ever heard, but the musicality of it is appealing to me, so it's not terrible. The title track, Hope for the Broken, follows a much more traditional formula, almost taking cues from like typical AOR or glam rock, as the track doesn't really fit the metalcore feel. Clean vocals all the way through, no real breakdowns. The only thing that would really tie this song to its home genre is its frantic pacing, but that comes off to me more like speed or thrash metal instead of metalcore. Though, yet again, huge props to the musicians, it sounds surprisingly fresh well over a decade after its release. The lyrical content also just seems to lean into that AOR scene, dropping the patriotism just to deliver a motivational track about picking yourself back up and not letting any naysayers tear you down. Yeah, to me, this one's just a glam metal song, and I enjoy that scene, so yeah, this worked for me. In the end is a little bit of a dud for me, and the main reason why is that this just feels like a flat song. The instrumentation is a bit generic, the actual climax of the track doesn't soar as high as the two previous ones, and it's performed at a more mid-tempo pace, which alongside its five and a half minute runtime just gets a bit tedious. There's also no heavy or invigorating vocals on the track, and it also seems to be a duet with some unnamed female vocalist, and she does a good job, but also emphasizes just how damn clean the song is, which in a genre like this, I at least prefer a bit more bite to the vocals. Vocals. The only redeeming part of the song for me is the solo, which does have some good fire to it, but again, the slower pacing of the song just feels like this could have hit so much harder with a bit of extra energy in there somewhere. Yeah, this one didn't hit for me. Fatal Flaw gets the energy back up and flowing, instantly throwing the listener into this gritty, faster riffing, and a lot more pop-punky style of percussion, which at least in my case isn't that big of a deal. I really like the breakdowns on this song, even if they are brief, and I think they manage to spice up the sound even more so than its already accelerating pace. Daniel contributes great vocals on this one as well, even if the glitchy effect before the second chorus is a bit corny, as these lyrics just seem to be about revealing this fatal flaw about some person who's worked at this beautiful and admirable visage. It's not the most meticulously written track by a long shot, but I do think it stands out in a good way on the record, so I'll take it. Dark Embracing may just be the most dynamic song on the album. It starts off with this organic, lush piano playing going on for about two minutes as this haunting, almost gothic take on a power ballad, and is easily my favorite part of the track. Then the song enters this brief, opulent, guitar-focused section with this slow arpeggio. It's pretty nice, but then all of a sudden it's like the album remembered just what genre it's supposed to be in, bringing in this familiar riffing at around the three minute mark, which I think is a little bit on the hit or miss side of things. The growled vocals are weak and don't feel like they're committing at all, but the actual singing done here is quite nice, so overall no denying the track is exciting and definitely a highlight. 
Breaking Point, the shortest track on the record, hardly passing three minutes, and I fully expected this one to be some volcanic, quick-paced track, and yeah, I was right. The powerful riffs and percussion come swinging right away, the drumming in particular might just be some of the most impressive on the record. Daniel's vocals are also some of the most consistent on the album too. The prolonged note at the one minute mark is very impressive as well, but the shrieks, growls, and regular singing for the chorus is all done pretty well. I don't really have much to add about this except it's one of my favorites. Really enjoy it. Six Sedation has a similar feel to Dark Embracing in that it also undergoes a few tonal and mood shifts during its runtime, but honestly I think this one does it better. It starts off with the slower, more menacing instrumental over these purposefully plotting guitar melody, which then suddenly sparks up into a more exciting, higher tempo and frantic track. Some of the best and clearest vocals from Daniel during this part as well, though the vocal melody feels a little bit forced at times, but that's only at a few key points. Then the track gets into a bit more of a bass heavy breakdown with a fiery, almost synthetic sounding solo. Despite the track being nearly 5 minutes long, it doesn't feel that long or tedious due to its fluid nature. I like it. With You Always starts off with some of the sweetest instrumentation on the album. Very light, feathery, twinkly in an oddly magical sense. However, that part only lasts for the intro as the more shrill riff comes in to introduce this strikingly obvious power ballad, which is a little bit of an unexpected turn considering the volatility of the record up to this point. I do like Daniel's vocals on the track too, even if during the chorus he goes a tad overboard in the pitch, but it's not that big of a deal. The lyrics obviously sentimental, just reminding this person that they're never gonna be alone in life again, you'll always be by their side. It's simple, it's cute, it's also pretty inoffensive as well, so not bad. What Have I Become, which seems to be the biggest hit from this record, and one of the band's biggest hits in general, and right away, I kinda get a sense as to why. As opposed to the metalcore sound of the early record, this track has a pretty strong pop-punk vibe. The tone of the screeching guitar and poppier rhythm really scream like all-time low, or similar bands in that scene. In fact, there are pretty much no metalcore elements to be seen on the track. Daniel's got very clean vocals, no abruptly heavy breakdown, it's almost a haven on the record, and makes for my favorite track here. Coffins of Sin kicks off with this eerie, unsettling, high-pitched piano and organ melody that almost sounds like it's coming out of one of those tacky, gothic thriller movies, only for that to essentially be drowned out entirely by the actual instrumentation, which returns to its signature sound after the slight deviation that was What Have I Become. Heavier vocals and riffing galore. Danny switches between his two vocal settings very smoothly on this track and is one of the most exciting parts of it, but I also really like how the instrumentation gains a tad bit of funk on the breakdown around four minutes in, with a great solo to boot. Lyrically, the track is pretty similar to Fatal Flaw, just exposing this person for who they truly are. This one's also nearly six minutes long and is not as fluid as earlier long tracks, but it's not bad. Promises starts off with mellow, twinkly acoustics, another nice deviation from the typical sound of the album, sweet piano work and a comfortable layer of soft guitar strumming underneath it. It's a gentle instrumental and stays that way for pretty much the entire track. No high energy riffs, just this serene acoustic ballad, plus a decent soaring solo to end the track. And honestly, it's not terrible. It also features another uncredited female duet partner, and she's got a great voice. May not be the best accompaniment to Daniel's voice, as he tries to keep to a lower register, and when they harmonize, they don't have the best chemistry in the world. But as a penultimate track, there could have been worse options, so I'll take it. And finally, the closer, A Siren Sanctuary, the longest track on the record, just shy of 8 minutes, and this starts off in a very similar way that Coffins of Sin did. Very grandiose, opulent, kind of mysterious with the piano and organ work. If they were looking for a suspenseful closer, they sure as shit got one. Eventually, the riff comes in mimicking that original melody, only for the actual track to come barreling in on this gravelly train and does not stop. Daniel's still harnessing his deeper voice in the previous track, but this time at his more natural sound. It's not the biggest difference in the world to his typical singing, but it is there and doesn't quite work as well, especially when the verses are almost wrapped. Much to my surprise, the track doesn't seem nearly as long as its time may indicate, and it ends on a satisfying fadeout. Honestly, not a bad way to end the record. Overall, I was 100% expecting this album to be a lot worse, but thankfully there were quite a good handful of redeeming elements to this record that made me come out with a positive feeling. The instrumentation is consistently good, the band are talented musicians and know how to craft captivating instrumentals, and while Daniel Case may need a bit of work vocally, for a debut record he expresses a great bit of talent early on in his career. However, yes, I do think there are flaws with it. I didn't find the lyricism in particular all that engaging, and when it was on display, it didn't really deliver much in the way you separate it from other bands of the sound, but I think the biggest issue with this record, which I didn't really mention in the track overviews because otherwise it would have been sounding like a broken record, but it's that the mixing here is shockingly bad. 
every, and I mean every track, has at least some element of compression, some more quiet and muffled than others, the vocal mixing in particular may just be one of the most offensive parts of the album as it's all over the place. As much as I can usually overlook amateurish mixing, it was a pretty heavy blemish on this record and my enjoyment of it at times. Still, it was not a terrible listen at all, and I'm feeling a 6 out of 10 on this album. Well guys, hope you enjoyed that review, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace!